Hello, in this video I'm going to solve a statically determinate torsion problem. Okay, so this problem is going to show how you work with a hollow cylinder. Uh, as you can see when looking at our shaft, our shaft has two obvious segments. The first one being a hollow segment and then followed by a smaller diameter solid segment. This problem is done is in imperial units and you can see that this kind of causes one issue that I ran into and that is you're gonna have to choose which uh, base unit you're going to use. Um, see so you have diameters in inches, uh, the lengths are in feet, more importantly the torques given are in uh, foot kips or foot thousand pounds um, and uh, when considering some other values like uh, the maximum shear and whatever I chose to solve this problem in keeping the inch as the fundamental unit so turned everything of feet into inches however you could absolutely solve this by turning inches into feet and just do it that way it's just a different way to do it but with the program it you can do it either way as long as you stay consistent with the units used it should work out so this shaft is made of steel 12,000 KSI that is 12,000 thousand PSI or yeah PSI uh, as far as segment one goes the hollow segment there's an outer diameter of six inches an inner diameter of three inches and then for the second segment, there's a diameter of 4 inches. At the end of the hollow segment, there is a torque in clockwise, 20 foot kip, and then at the very end, in counterclockwise, 5 foot kip. Okay, so let's enter this problem. Okay, so number of segments, 2. Okay, so for segment one, when looking from the left, that's the hollow segment, and it's 10 feet. Remember, I'm putting things into inches being the base unit. It may be easier to do feet, but I'm just kind of showing that uh, as long as you stay consistent, you can work with changing things up a little bit. So 10 feet, that's 120 inches outer diameter 6 inner diameter 3 outer shear modulus 12 whoops 12 okay the moment of inertia calculate it out remember you have to subtract the inner diameter from the outer Okay, so on to segment two, the solid segment. So that's five feet, that's 60 inches. Outer diameter is four. Same shear modulus. That should be that. Then just the standard moment of area, polar moment of area equation. Okay, so then we can move on to adding our torques, of which there are two values. That last pop-up was about solving for torque if you're given power and angular rate and everything. We're just giving the torque straight up in this. So for the first torque, 20 foot kip, counterclockwise, or in clockwise, so it's negative, it's at 120 inches. That, remember that's kip, so that's thousand pounds. So twenty thousand. For the final one, that's fifteen feet, which is 180 inches. That's five thousand foot pounds. However, Remember, those are in foot-pounds, 
So, and we're doing inch pounds because we've converted everything else into inches. So what we want to do is just take converting that into inch pounds, multiplying by 12. Okay. And it's clamped on the left. Okay, let's go ahead and solve. So for segment one, or I mean from working from the right end, the first one we look at is segment two. You can see here we have the five foot kip applied, then there's the reactionary amount of torsion within the material, which should equal the same amount. Then I have solved for the max shear stress, max shear strain, and the twist. Now note in here that I have multiplying the 5,000 foot-pounds times 12, bringing it into inches, and so on. Okay, so let's put in these values. <clears throat> okay, so that's 60,000 inch pounds, 4775. And part of the reason I turned it into inches is so that I would end up having values like the max shear stress being in PSI, which is kind of nice. Okay, and the twist. Okay, and let's move on to looking at segment one. Okay, so now looking at segment one, we've got this positive 5,000 foot-pounds minus 20,000 foot-pounds so that comes down to negative 15,000 foot-pounds and of course you have to convert that multiply it by 12 to get into inches and so on so let's put that in so it's negative 180,000 Shear outer four five two seven. And one thing to consider is that even though this is a negative value, the <clears throat> the maximum shear stress is just entered in as a positive. That a negative in there doesn't really mean anything. So you can just ignore that. The program will not accept it if you put in negative for the maximum shear stress. Just the magnitude of that value is what it wants. Okay, we've solved for the strain also, but it's not asking for that. Then here's the twist. Which, and you can see as in this one, the clockwise act the clockwise torque is dominant so that the reaction is also negative leading to a negative amount of twist and that negative amount exceeds the positive amount of twist so overall even though they cancel each other each other out somewhat it is still overall twisting in the clockwise direction. Okay, so that's it for working with hollow and messing around with using your units a little bit differently, but that's all there is really to it. In the next video, I'm going to be working through a composite problem.